The Buffalo Bills must be ready to stop the run in week one against the Arizona Cardinals. I'm breaking that down for you and more today on Locked on Bills. You are Locked on Bills, your daily Buffalo Bills podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Bills Mafia? It's Joe Marino, author of Go Bills and Buffalo's Run, also the co-host of the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast, and I'm your host of Locked On Bills. want to thank you for making Locked On Bills your first listen every day, and a big welcome and shout out to our everydayers. You know who you are. Those of you who never miss a single episode, I appreciate y'all being here very, very much. I'd also like to invite you to subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Crossover Thursday is presented by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code all lowercase locked on NFL to win $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. Prize Picks, run your game. All right, folks, I'm joined today by Alex Clancy, the outstanding host of Locked On Cardinals. It's here, Alex, week one, Bills Cardinals. We knew about it back in May, but finally we get a chance to talk about this game. The preseason is over. Training camp is over. The records matter at this point moving forward. Welcome in and welcome to week one. Yeah, man, I'm stoked. Like, especially with this matchup going to Orchard Park week one against a team that has a lot of question marks, just like the Cardinals do, just very different question marks. Super exciting. It's going to tell the tale for the future a lot for both of these teams in 2024, and it starts against each other in week one, which is going to be awesome. Fascinated to get some of your thoughts here on this Cardinals offense as we start diving into this matchup. Obviously, a weird situation with Kyler Murray and a regime change. He didn't get a chance to play at the beginning of that last year coming back from the injury, but now a full off season with the opportunity – for them to install this offense and, and really bring it together with Marvin Harrison Jr. as the premier weapon in this passing game. What are you thinking here for this weapons for this uh, Cardinals offense? You know, one thing that gets overlooked a lot about this team, just because of all of the skill position players they have on the outside, is this is going to be a run first offense. And I said when when Jonathan Gannon and Drew Petson came over, it's like boring is good. Boring wins. And when you can run the ball and play defense, you usually win more games than you lose. So you're going to see James Conner. You're going to see Trey Benson. You're going to see Kyler Murray situationally run the ball. And that will set up the play action. That will set up Trey McBride. That will set up Marvin Harrison Jr. Going into week one, I don't see Marvin Harrison Jr. being the first option. He's going to be the third option. He's a rookie. He's a highly touted rookie. He may very well take over the, the number one role sooner than people expect, but it's going to be James Conner. It's going to be Trey McBride, and it's going to be Kyler Murray. And that's the only way that they're going to be able to potentially beat Buffalo, which we'll get to later, is the offense staying on the field. Yeah, one of the big thoughts that I have about this game is the Cardinals and their rushing offense. And I don't think people know how good they were running the ball last year. I think number one in the league and yards per attempt. And, and so that's going to be a tall order for the Bills on defense. But what is it about this rushing game that makes it so good? Because what's fascinating about the Cardinals and their ability to run the ball, you think it's just Kyler Murray, an athletic quarterback. It's not, right? They they run the ball and ran the ball well before he even came back to the lineup. I mean, deeper backfield situation with Trey Benson, perhaps an upgraded offensive line? Yeah. You know, it's I, I the phrase I used a lot last year for Lockdown Cardinals fans was proof of concept. And we saw that last year with Drew Petzing's offense. Not only – his play calling ability, but also the run blocking schemes implemented in an effort to make James Conner, you know, yield his first thousand yard rushing season. That offense and defense, that was a bad football team last year. That was borderline a relegated football team last year. And with their, what they were able to do running the ball, you said, as you mentioned, without Kyler Murray for a large chunk of the season, with Josh Dobbs, who wasn't with the team for more than two weeks before week one, that's all Drew Petzing. Drew Petzing will be a head coach in this league in the next couple seasons. And if the offense balls out this year the way we expect it to, it could be next season. And that's its scheme, its play calling, and it's being able to set up the play action, which keeps opposing defenses honest. What type of role do you expect Trey Benson to have? Obviously, I'm interested in this game in particular, but yeah. I love this dude coming out of Florida State. And you want an explosive back that can win after contact, that can create big plays. I mean, he's a very much a do-everything player. I think he's a wonderful player. 
What's the week one role for a guy like Trey Benson? I think they're going to feel it out. Bell Cow is going to be, even though I hate that phrase, can we talk about Bell Cow and Gunslinger? They should never be spoken again. I, I, I can't do it. Anyways, I don't think that he, I think James Conner is going to be the guy. He's going to be 65 to 70% of the touches. And then they have three other backs, Mario Mercado, Trey Benson, and Michael Carter. We'll see, we'll see who's elevated on game day. I think he'll touch the ball, you know, seven, eight carries, nine carries. I've stated this all offseason because of the state of the defense that the Cardinals have. The best offense the Cardinals have is their – the best defense the Cardinals have is their rush attack. So with that, they may be running the ball a little bit more in week one, bleeding more clock, keeping Josh Allen on the sideline. So if that were the case, that would inflate it a little bit. But eight or nine carries, maybe a couple passes out of the backfield to get the rookie in uh, getting his toes wet in his first game. Now let's shift gears to the defense here. Jonathan Gannon, defensive-minded head coach. Alex, respectfully, I feel like this is an undermanned unit in terms of talent. And that was always going to be a bit of the situation here coming out of the, the Steve Kime era and, and not really handing over much to Monty Austin for it. Let's be honest, right? I think he's done a good job of manipulating the draft and, and allowing them to have assets to move forward. I don't see like, I don't feel like this defense has the pieces in place yet for it to be what Jonathan Gannon wants it to be. What are your expectations for this unit? You're, you'd be correct, Joe Marino of Locked on Bills. I mean, it's losing B.J. Ojolari, their lead pass rusher, second-year guy out of LSU, losing Darius Robinson, who plays inside and on the outside of the defensive line, uh, rookie, 27th overall pick from Missouri, doesn't help. So their pass rush is non-existent. Like, when I say non-existent, I'm not saying, like, you know, it could surprise some people. It's non-existent. They bolstered the interior of the defensive line, which should help people off the edge, but it's going to be tough. And then you look at the cornerback room, it's a bunch of younger guys. Sean Murphy Bunting coming over from Tennessee by way of Super Bowl winning Tampa Bay, and they drafted Garrett Williams last year, third-round pick out of Syracuse. Um, Max Melton, second-round pick out of uh, out of Rutgers, this most recent draft. It's a lot of unknowns in the cornerback room also. The only pillars you have on defense, it's probably easier to say this, Kazir White, off-ball linebacker, who's going to be the heartbeat of this defense coming over from Philly with Jonathan Gannon and Nick Rallis was his LB coach, and Buda Baker and Jalen Thompson over the top with Daydream Taylor Demerson, who's been an impressive rookie out of Texas Tech, backing them up. It's going to be the backers and the safeties that are going to have to cover the, you know, the deficiencies of the pass rush in the cornerback room. Uh, it's uh, it's certainly a benefit to have a defensive-minded head coach like Jonathan Gannon. Yeah. I, you you surely know that he wishes he had a few more toys to play with here. I do like Garrett Williams, though, I think, as a, as a good-looking yes. young player. And, of course, you know I, I think one of the underrated components of, of Arizona for a long time has been the safety tandem of Buda Baker and Jalen Thompson. I don't think people know enough about Jalen Thompson across the NFL. He's a, he's a good starter for them. and uh, But, yeah, it's the front, right? Is the front good enough at this point in time? And not having Ojolari, not having Robinson right off the bat certainly creates some challenges. All right, folks, on the other side of it, we're going to get into the top storylines for the Bills entering week one. Be sure to stick with us. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active users. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps, Prize Picks is just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Price Picks is the only real money daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy so that your lineups stay in play even if one of your guys gets injured. Price Picks also puts their members first, so all withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. When my picks hit, I get money back in as quick as 15 minutes. There's some stuff I like this week across the NFL. How about Lamar Jackson? More or less on one and a half touchdowns. That includes rushing and passing touchdowns. I like that. How about Jordan Love? more or less on seven and a half rushing yards. I think he's going to get that on Friday night against the Packers. And then in the Bills Cardinals game, Khalil Shakir, they have him more or less on four receptions, smash the over on that. So download the prize picks app today and use code locked on NFL and get $50 instantly. When you play $5, that's code locked on NFL and prize picks to get $50 instantly. When you play $5, you don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed prize picks run your game. Week one, crossover Thursday, Alex Clancy locked on Cardinals, Joe Marino locked on Bills, previewing Orchard Park, the beauty of Orchard Park, hosting week one's matchup between these two teams with a lot of unknowns for the future, and it starts in week one against each other. Joe, let's talk about the Bills. There has been movement. Two new full-season coordinators in Joe Brady and Bobby Babich. 
Josh Allen coming back, no Stephon Diggs. It's been popcorn eating fun for everybody outside of Buffalo watching what's taking place, not making fun. It's just there's been transition and it's been great. Changes new. Is this a James Cook offense? Like a bunch of new wide receivers. Joe, talk to me about what this offense specifically right out the gate should look like if everything goes to plan week one against the Cardinals. Yeah, I think two things come to mind. First of all, this passing game, the idea is everybody eats. You see some teams that are out there like the Dolphins or the Texans uh, that are loading up on weapons in the passing game, the 49ers, teams that really want to have a ton of star power at their tight end wide receiver positions. You see other offenses like the Packers and the Chiefs and even the Lions to an extent, and now the Bills that are playing kind of a money ball approach with their with their pass catchers, yeah. and that's where the Bills are at. I don't think you look at this group and see, you know, the Stefan Diggs isn't here. Like, let's just go ahead and say it, right? He's not here. The, the 150, 160 targets a year that go to that guy, they're not here. But it is an everybody eats idea. And I think it starts with Dalton Kincaid and Khalil Shakir. Those guys were the catalyst for this offense down the stretch. I know everyone talks about transitioning away from Diggs and Davis. Well, that happened last year. Over the last 13 games, Khalil Shakir had more receiving yards than Stefan Diggs on 60 less targets. You heard that correctly. Dalton Kincaid led the team in receiving over the last 12 games. The transition started last year. That's who this offense is going to be about in terms of the passing game. You sprinkle in the Curtis Samuels and the Keon Coleman's and pass catching backs. That'll all happen. And then, like you talk about with Arizona, running the ball, right? The Bills are, were a very good rush offense last year. Certainly, Josh Allen's a part of that. It's also just running the ball with running backs. James Cook had a really good year rushing the football last year. They got a deeper backfield situation with Ray Davis, a rookie out of Kentucky, in the mix as well. So you can expect the ground game, and you can expect an everybody-eats approach in the passing game. Now, one thing, selfishly for me, I always kind of saw Dawson Knox as a you know a, an unsung hero in Buffalo from afar. Is there a world where you could see a light version of Rob Gronkowski and Aaron Hernandez with the, the lacking talent in the wide receiver room compared to what it once was? Or is Dawson Knox really going into the background and being more of a – bona fide tight end to a Don Kincaid leading the charge. You know, I think it's aggressive to say Hernandez and Gronk. I mean, that's a really special pair. I think there's yeah. a lot of upside with this pair of tight ends that the Bills have in Kincaid and, and Dawson Knox, and they do want to be a 12 personnel team. I think you're going to see the Bills with two tight ends on the field at least 30% of the time, 40%, you know, maybe even higher against Arizona. And I think if as long as those tight ends are healthy, I think that's what they want to be. And so it's, a, it's about creating matchups, right? You have two tight ends like that that are, uh, you know, Kincaid certainly on of upside in, in the passing game and, and knocks more of a traditional player. That helps you force matchups. And whether the defense defense wants to match up with bigger people, that's fine. Then they don't really have the athleticism to match up. If they want to put smaller players on the field to, to keep up athletically, well, now they're not big enough. And I think the Bills want to try to dictate terms in that capacity. And the root of that is this tight end duo of Kincaid and Knox. And for week one, they're healthy. Yeah, and it, it, we we can't be, we'd be remiss if we didn't discuss Keon Coleman. Uh, late pick, um, where he could have, you know, late, late first-round pick. Talk to me about what he's looked like in camp and if he's ready to take that wide receiver one role or if he's going to be kind of, you know, learning the NFL game. It's going to take a little while, um, uh, you know, to develop at the NFL level. I think it's a little bit of both. I think Keon Coleman had a very good training camp in terms of, Josh Allen showing the willingness to give him chances to go make plays on the ball. Right? Keon Coleman's not going to be a big-time separator, but can he find space? Can he use his size and his ball skills and his body control to make plays and really be part of kind of the off-script stuff as well that Josh Allen uh, is able to do? And you think about Gabe Davis as kind of that guy that was you know, down the field. Josh Allen gets out of the pocket and, and makes a big play down the field. I think Keon Coleman does that. But I think it's more of a platoon situation when it comes to that X receiver role where Matt Collins, I think, is going to have a lot of opportunity. So, like, don't be surprised when you're watching Bills Cardinals in week one and, you know, Matt Collins is getting five, six targets in this passing game. So, Keon Coleman, I think, is a piece of this. I think it's going to be a process for him to really be a featured piece of this offense. He's going to get opportunity, but I think it's going to be kind of a shared workload as it relates to that X receiver position. Yeah, I always see um... – Matt Collins is kind of the Harry Douglas role where he's always given that third wide receiver, you know, moniker. But if anybody goes down and he can jump in, maybe this is the time where he can, you know, produce like we've seen him produce in spurts. Now let's move to the defense. This is what scares the hell out of me from the Cardinal side. Gregory Rousseau at Oliver rinse and repeat while this defense has been in transition, losing Micah Hyde, losing, you know, guys that have been there for a long time. 
what is this defensive strong suit going to be? Is it going to be the front? Is the D-line going to be wreaking havoc all year? Kind of walk me through the strength of the defense going into week one. I think the Bills are really good at corner. They have Rasul Douglas, who's a playmaker, Taron Johnson, who is second-team All-Pro, slot corner, and then Christian Benford. That's that's a name I think people in the NFL world got to get more acquainted with. Okay. He's become a, a good starter for the Buffalo Bills, especially for the style of defense. Physical player, good ball skills, very sound in coverage. And so I think, to me, that's when I when I think about the strength of this defense. It's those players. But also, it's, it's to some degree the front. Now, there's no Nick Bosa. There's no Miles Garrett. There's no T.J. Watt. But it's the depth that they have and quality starters within that. Maybe not a game wrecker, but between Rousseau, between Oliver, between Daquan Jones, you do have some some really talented players, not to mention an A.J. Epinesa and, and some improved depth as it relates to the interior as well. Von Miller is, is part of the mix here. And boy, was he not good last year. Uh, there's no there's no way to deny that. But he, I mean, he, he rushed himself back from an ACL mm -hmm. and uh, he wasn't ready to go. And it's clear you've seen some signs of Vaughn being close to what you remember Vaughn being. And, and now he's not asked to come in and play 60, 70% of the snaps, right? It's going to be long and late downs and they feel like they can get something out of him in that capacity. So it's the waves that they have up front with the, with the D line. And I think it's the corners and they've also got a good middle linebacker in Terrell Bernard, big time splash play guy that really emerged for the bills last year, replacing Tremaine Edmonds. He's a team captain. It's year two, year two as a starter year three in the system. That's another guy you got to pay attention to on this defense. Yeah, before we pivot, uh, pivot to pass a victory next, give me a weakness, something the Cardinals, if they've watched film, if they've paid attention, that they can exploit in an effort to keep in the game on Sunday. Yeah, I think it's it's the running mate for uh, Terrell Bernard. It's Dorian Williams, a, a rookie. Well, not a rookie, second-year player out of two lanes. He was a third-round pick last year. Matt Milano is supposed to be the starter. He's got a torn bicep. You don't have to worry about him if you're the Cardinals. So mm -hmm. Dorian Williams kind of being thrust into that opportunity and – you know, he's he's a fast, physical, downhill player, but boy, does he struggle in coverage, particularly with some of the misdirection stuff, play action, rollouts. You kind of you kind of like your opportunities with Trey McBride there uh, in that regard. And then it's the safety situation where, you know, Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde, kind of staples of this team for so long, no longer in the mix, transitioning to Taylor Rapp and presumably DeMar Hamlin as his running mate. You got to be licking your chops if uh, if you see that, if you're Kyler Murray and, and this, this Cardinals passing him. I think that's where that I have a level of concern about what this defense is going to be, not only in week one, but throughout the course of the season. All right, folks, we're going to get into the most important things for each team to win the game in week one. We'll do that for you here on the other side of it. Be sure to stick with us. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals that you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't even visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. So hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. All right, folks, it's crossover Thursday here presented by prize picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Be sure to go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL, all lowercase to win $50 instantly. When you play $5, you don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. Prize picks run your game. I'm Joe Marino, host of Locked On Bills, joined by Alex Clancy, host of Locked On Cardinals, and we got to discuss the path to victory. What are the important things for each team to do to win the game? Now, the Bills are favors, uh, favorites in this game at home, um, but uh, I think there's always a path for any team to win in the NFL. What's the keys in your mind for Arizona to come in and spoil week one for the Buffalo Bills? Yeah, the three keys for the Cardinals. One, run the ball effectively. The best defense the Arizona Cardinals have in 2024 is their ability to run the ball. Eat clock, keep Josh Allen on the sidelines. Number two, touchdowns, not field goals. On the road, harsh environment for the Cardinals. Orchard Park is one of the toughest places to play in the NFL. If the Cardinals get in the red zone, they cannot settle for three. They must execute and score touchdowns. And number three, 
keep Josh Allen in front of you. It's the lesser of two evils. If Josh Allen runs rough shot, 10 carries, 80 yards, and two touchdowns, like he's very well equipped to do, especially when pr- plays break down, that is nightmare fuel for the Cardinals. You will take him throwing the ball down the field to a wide receiver room that's never played together, anchored potentially by a rookie. You take that and trust Jalen Thompson and Buda Baker over the top to make plays, and you just keep Josh Allen in front of you. Yeah, I think it's a it's a good call out on the run component. Um, we talked about Arizona it was a five yards per carry they averaged last year, number one in the NFL. Well, the Bills twenty eighth in the NFL and and yards per attempt allowed against the run. Um, and I think there's some context that needs to be applied to that as with every stat. But I think the reality is the Bills' run defense is prone to giving up some explosive plays. Now, I think in certain matchups against running backs where, I mean, you know, they're going to feed them. I think the bills will, you know, kind of really come in with a, a game plan to stop it, but there's just these moments where they give up long runs. And I feel like Arizona is going to certainly try to exploit that. And I think that was a good call out for you uh, as one of your, your keys, because for me, Alex, when I think about the bill side of things and what the bills need to do to, to win this football game, the number one thing that I put down was stop the run. And, um, they'll be tested. They'll be tested with their ability to, to fit and, and be firm because you, you know, that's Arizona's plan. They want to come in and shorten the game and control the clock and keep Josh Allen on the sideline. The way to do that is sustain drives and pound the rock. And so I think that's a good call out. You also mentioned the uh, red zone scoring touchdowns, right. And, and not, uh, not settling for field goals. The bills run red zone defense last year was a concern 19th in the NFL. Uh, giving up a touchdown 56% of the time. So that's definitely an area of the team where you're looking for them to make some improvements. So I feel like, yeah, I think you were spot on with a, with a lot of your your ideas there in terms of what it's going to take for Arizona to come in and get an upset win. You know, it's something that the Cardinals have struggled with through the last regime, touchdowns, not field goals, not touchdowns, uh, running the ball and dedicating to the run. I think it's going to be interesting to see what Buffalo does. And with that, coupled with that, the, the range of Drew Petzing's true offense with talent in it is if the Bills stack the box, are they going to the Cardinals gonna be able to eat on the outside with Trey McBride, Marvin Harrison Jr., and the rest of the rest of the wide receivers? Or if the box is a little bit lighter, are the Cardinals going to be able to effectively run the ball? Like it's that's going to be a a test for throughout the entirety of the season. And it starts in a week one where the Cardinals like this isn't going to be a game where they're going to lose by a hundred and you hope they stay close if they play their game properly. I mean, it could be a one possession game with a couple minutes to play. My keys, Alex, for Buffalo to to win in week one. Well, I kind of spoiled the first one. <laughs> Stop the run. Yeah. You know, you know what Arizona wants to do. And so again, a unique run scheme, fit the run. I think tackling is going to be important. I think the Bills have been kind of hit or miss with their consistency consistency as a tackling defense. So when you get a chance to bring guys down, you got to bring them down. You got to fit the run. You got to play the run. So I think that's really critical. Number one, number two is your star quarterback, Josh Allen needs to maximize his opportunities against the suspect defense. And I, I I think Arizona's on a really good path. I've said that I like Monty Austin Ford. I like how he's manipulating things. I I really do. He just doesn't have the dudes on defense yet. And when you have Josh Allen, I don't, I mean, you could talk about turnovers and, and wide receiver rooms and all that stuff. Josh Allen is one of the premier quarterbacks in the entire NFL this is an opportunity at home against a defense that you feel like is going to be a little bit leaky that doesn't have the rush. Like your guy, 17 for the Bills, has got to go out and make a ton of plays. And I, I feel like he's going to be up for the task. And number three is don't beat yourself. You know, I think that's whenever I see the Bills kind of have a letdown game, it's because they beat themselves with turnovers, with defensive breakdowns, with special teams. And Josh Allen, obviously an MVP candidate. And I think sometimes you get the worst of Josh Allen when he wants to go into a game and really put on a show. Sometimes it's okay to just do the smart, right thing with the football. And and like you said earlier in the, in the episode, be a little bit boring. And, and and I think that's, that's winning at times. And so for Josh Allen threading the needle between, okay, I'm dynamic. I can do anything that I want to. Oh, but also sometimes it's okay to just do the smart, right thing with the football defensive breakdowns. I put down in here, we talked about Dorian Williams, stepping in the new safety tandem, Don't be leaky. Don't be leaky with your defense and and allow explosive plays to happen uh, for Arizona. That's going to, you know, allow them to have momentum shifting plays. And then lastly is the special teams. And 
what this really comes down to is, is the Bills kicker, Tyler Bass. I think a lot of people remember him missing that field goal against Kansas City in the divisional round that could have tied the game. Um, I mean, he missed it, but that was a, a stretch really since about week seven last year where he was very, very inconsistent. And that's continued throughout training camp. And so if you have to lean on that guy to make a kick, you, you're very concerned about it. And of course, special teams in general this year with the new kickoff rule, you know, I think the teams that are able to figure it out are going to have a very competitive advantage. And so those types of margins, I think, are going to be really critical every week and especially in week one. Yeah. I mean, you look at Josh Allen, like Josh Allen's personification is somebody swinging a golf club too hard, trying to hit it further when all you have to do is Freddie couples it and just hit it smooth and it usually goes straight and you hit it longer than you think. So yeah, Josh Allen, like being able to frustrate Josh Allen in some form or fashion is probably number one on the list on the grease board in, you know, in, in the locker room for Jonathan Gannon and Nick Rallis. Like that's it. If they can turn the ball over a couple times, if they can turn the ball over once, it could be enough to swing the pendulum enough for the Cardinals to get a dub on Sunday. It it does it, it could you know it's when it is where it is on the field. If he drops the ball, if he drops it on the ground, and the Cardinals recover it, if he throws a pick, whether it's tipped or otherwise, that's going to be the best way for the Cardinals to stay in this game, hoping that Josh Allen tries to do too much, which he's done at times. He gets away with it because he's an elite athlete, but that's something that hopefully the Cardinals can get lucky. And if they do want to get a win here, I, you know, I, I agree with you with stopping the run. I think that that's, again, this is something I've stated all year. The best defense, that's the only defense the Cardinals really have is being able to keep the offense on the field. That's it. The best defense against Josh Allen is when he's sitting on the sideline drinking a Gatorade. And if the Cardinals can stay on the field, at least for half the game, they just can't be, you know, on the field for 26 minutes. It's like the Richter scale. Every minute is massive that your offense isn't on the field. And if the Cardinals can stay around the 30, 31, 32 minute mark, they will be in this game in the fourth quarter. All right, folks, Alex Clancy locked on Cardinals, Joe Marino locked on bills, getting you ready here for week one orchard park bills, hosting the Cardinals, plenty of more coverage coming your way. on both locked on bills, locked on Cardinals. If you want either side of the conversation, make sure that you are following that you're subscribed that you're listening pre and post game because we have you covered every day here on the locked on podcast network for alex clancy i'm joe marino thanks so much for being here and enjoy the rest of the week and enjoy week one